What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Jumara's World Podcast, and today we're going to be taking a look at Wild Card Weekend, January 13th through the 14th of 2024. Four games. Um, they were very, very exciting. Like I said, a lot of these games went according to plan, except for a few. Well, actually, you know, yeah, I would say except for a few because we knew the Chiefs should have beat the Dolphins and uh, we pretty much knew that the Lions were favored to beat the Rams. But the Packers and the Cowboys and the Browns and the Texans, it was a little bit more of a shock. Now, the number one thing is this. Joe Flacco is actually Joe Fluco and he actually showed it in a very, very wild fashion and it was real disgusting. Now, like I said, Skip Bayless is a complete, like I don't wanna say what he is, but that is a really good nickname for him because the dude threw two pick sixes back to back. All right, this is a guy that came in and helped this team get false hope. Now, as I watched him play, I wasn't under the impression that he was going to do anything spectacular. Remember, when he won that Super Bowl with, Bol uh, Super Bowl with Baltimore, he was actually, you know, part of a very, very good defense uh, led by Ray Lewis and them boys. So he didn't really have to do much. Uh, he had some miraculous plays leading up to that. Uh, it was a, like, a, you know, a crazy run for the Ravens, which is why he got paid money and they were furious that they ever paid him. But this is what Flacco has, you know, was for the most part. A lot of decent plays, and then out of nowhere, he just turns into a complete moron. And that's what happened. And um, he delivered the way that only Joe Fluco could, and the Texans beat the hell out of them 45 to 14. Now, before we start going really crazy on the Browns, let's take a look at CJ Stroud and how he just looked so mature and was ready to beat on these dudes. That is a very, very huge um, accomplishment for that young man, obviously in history and a lot of other things. I don't believe that any of us thought that the Texans would be able to do what we saw them do. And before you guys say, oh yeah, you know, um, what is it, Bryce Young, you know, he didn't really have a lot of help. I didn't know a lot of these receivers that CJ Stroud was thrown to. And he just sat in the pocket and just throwing lasers. So, I, you know, again, Maybe D'Amico Ryans has a lot to do with it. Maybe the coaching. I don't know. But right now, the Texans are very hot. Do I think they're a team that can go deep, like a deep run type thing? I think they might get eliminated in the next round. But like I said, this was very, very impressive to beat the hell out the Browns the way that they did. And, you know, Joe Flacco, like I said, it, 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 he's playing with house money. You know, nobody expected the Browns to be able to do anything. Deshaun Watson has been a debacle. It's been a nightmare. That whole situation is bad. They probably should fire anybody that did uh, the signing uh, with that guy. But that has nothing to do with it. Regardless of the situation, they went out there and they laid down and got beat on. That's ultimately what happened. It was a really, really nasty game uh, from beginning to end. And it just got really nasty. Um, after after they went up 24-14 in, in the first half, and then it starts off the Texans, you know, they get 14 points in the third. Browns can't score. It, it was over. So congratulations to the Texans. You guys are moving on. And the Browns are the Browns. Uh, Dolphins and the Chiefs. Now, this was a really cold game. Uh, you know, the Dolphins throughout the year, being such a fast team, had a lot of people like myself, very, very like motivated to see them win more. And then the more that I watched this playoff game, the more that I realized that two was garbage, even though, like, I don't know. Yeah, well, actually, I do know. He had Tyreek Hill Waddle, who just throwing, like, really fast passes. Because people are going to say, yeah, he led the league in passing and all that stuff. Very, very fast team. He was able to get the ball out very quickly. They couldn't really beat any teams over 500. And, you know, for the most part, we knew he wasn't good. But this displayed a lot of bad things with him and his future. Now that they're going to be looking into, you know, a, a contract deal. Dude, I don't know. It's a really, yo, dog, it, this is really, really tough, bros. Like, you got to admit it. Like, do you keep Tua or do you just try to find somebody else that can throw the ball down the field to two fast receivers? You know what I'm saying? To make some reads and whatever. Uh, yo, we got to see what happens in the draft. Um, you know, maybe some trades can happen and you get somebody that can actually do it. But I don't trust Tua. And I never have. But it was good to see the team play well and, you know, be able to, you know, still strive. Tyreek Hill, you know, he I think he had the only touchdown in the game. Um, but you get to see the bigger difference between Mahomes and what he went to with Tua, but he got his money. You know what I'm saying? You know, Tyreek Hill got his money, but and he was a big reason why the uh, Dolphins were able to do what they did. But I'm pretty sure if they, they should have just paid him with the Chiefs because I think that him being there made the Chiefs more dangerous. Even though Mahomes did it without him, he was still more dangerous. The team is overall more dangerous with that speed and the fact that Mahomes has a rocket arm and Tua can throw the ball one yard. It's a really wild uh, discrepancy, but the Chiefs are moving on. I was not really motivated about this team. 
So I won't be surprised if they're knocked out of the playoffs at any given time. Uh, Rice went crazy though with 130 yards. I just want to note that Pacheco was pretty decent in that weather. Uh, but again, I, I don't really trust the Chiefs to like go and win another Super Bowl. That That's just my point of view with it. The Packers and the Cowboys. Now, once this game started, and yeah, dude, let me just go ahead and break this down, right? When the Packers went right down the field and scored to start the game, I was like, all right, you know, listen, it's the same old Cowboys. When Dakota Rain Prescott started to play like Dakota Rain Prescott, people were trending with playoff Dak. We were going crazy. Uh, just go, yo, just trolling him. That dude is garbage. Like, listen, I'm going to look, guys, he has 403 yards, but those yards are all garbage yards. Like, he didn't really do anything when the game counted. They... It's a really, again, this is this is really tough, and GMs have a lot of work to do with this. You can't win with Dakota Rain Prescott. I think he proved that. Like, in, bro, in front of everybody, I think he proved that he's just not that guy. You know, maybe he needs to go sleep on that, that mattress that he's, you know, and just, just go hibernate with that commercial that he's always on. He gotta go do something. That dude is trash as F. I don't know what he, dude, he was literally like just blind. Like, wh why would you? Dude, what was going on in that game? And then the Packers played them so well. They played that match and zone coverage that's very, very like deceptive because you don't know who's covering who. And then meanwhile, on the other side, their defense didn't even know how to cover a crossing route. Like, what, what the hell? Like, and then Dan Quinn is upstairs with his hat backwards, looking like an idiot, trying to act like he's going to get hired as a head coach someplace else. He sucks as a defensive coordinator. That dude is terrible. The whole situation is crazy. Okay, McCarthy has to be fired. Everybody has to be fired. It doesn't really matter. But this was a huge letdown um, for all Cowboy fans. And I know you guys feel the same way about it. Um, they got dominated, man. They really got dominated. Uh, I, You know, just Jordan Love just put on the show, man. He just really put on the show. He was throwing the ball like he was like a mixture of Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers in their prime, man. There's something about the Packers with quarterbacks, dog, because this guy was not that good. Like, bro, I was looking at the play. I'm like, yo, this guy has never really done anything like this. And then you go out there with the brightest of lights and you just beat the hell out of the Cowboys and they didn't lose at home all season. Unbelievable game by the Packers, man. Uh, I guess I don't know what's going to happen with them in the end. We'll wait to see what goes on. I think they're going to be playing the Niners. Um, we'll see how that works out. But that was a hell of a game. But the Cowboys, bro, yo, Dakota Rain, bro, like Rain Prescott, dog, like rain on me. Like, bro, that dude is garbage. I don't, listen, I don't want to hear nothing about Cowboy fans with Dak. Going forward, just don't 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 worry about it. If he comes back next year, which he probably has to, because it'll be too much dead cap money, um, you guys are doomed. There's nobody that believes in Dak, not even Dak. Rams and Lions. Now, this was a real playoff game, and I enjoyed this game thoroughly because the teams were pretty much, for the most part, evenly matched, and it was all about Jared Goff trying to prove that they made a mistake getting rid of him. But the Lions just really relied on the run game, and they, you know, they pretty much, Gibbs held the game down for them. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, to be quite honest, that's ultimately what happened. The run game was good enough, and the Rams just couldn't get the run game going. Nakua did everything he could. He, that, that, yo, that man played his heart out. It just wasn't enough. It just wasn't enough, man. Like, he, dude, I got to see, everybody got to see why it was such a rave about him. He is such a special player. Cooper Cup. If he was able to make a couple more plays, probably could have helped out a little bit, but Matthew Stafford did overthrow him a few times when he was wide open. There were some missed opportunities uh, for the Rams, but overall it was an evenly matched game. Very happy for the Lions though. The first playoff spot since 1991, dog. That, that, that is, that, that's a beautiful thing to see. You know, so it's a lot of history and a lot of, um, you know, motivation with it. We got to see Calvin Johnson on the sidelines. That was beautiful to see, uh, but ultimately, the teams were evenly matched. Jared Goff did not, you know, he played well. He played well. I think Matthew Stafford was the better quarterback, like I thought. That's why I went with the Rams, because I just went with the better quarterback. You guys can argue all you want. Matthew Stafford is still the better quarterback, but the Lions are the better team, and uh, they were able to pull it out. Uh, a lot of things, you know, like I said, it, it was a lot of di discrepancies that went on throughout the game where you can argue this call, this call, whatever. But I just believe it was an evenly matched game overall and it wasn't too much of oh this bad this bad call this bad you know what i'm saying like I, I, to be fair the lions honestly won that game outright they just played a better overall game they figured out how to deal with aaron donald and it just worked for them that's ultimately what i was able to uh decipher watching it but like i said puka nakua man that yo to me uh yo a couple more opportunities the rams probably could have blown this game out of they, they couldn't cover him 
that that man, that man is uncoverable. I, I can't wait to see him next season. But shout out to him and his family, man. That that dude is really, really good. Congratulations, like I said, to the Lions. This is huge. First playoff spot since 1991. So we'll see how it continues to go. Obviously, there are two games going on later today. So I'll be back with more uh, recaps. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this one. You guys go ahead and have a blessed day. I'm going to see you guys and girls next time. One love, y'all.